in the hood, like we love fish fillet sandwiches. Yeah. You know, but, but when Arby's you, has I've never thought fish of, fillet sandwich. I've never thought yeah. about <laughs> the piece of cheese is like this big. Yeah. It's yeah. like half of the size of the sandwich. It's a budget fish sandwich. Yeah, it's a budget fish sandwich. We don't want a budget fish sandwich. I'm like, what is this? That's true. It was a I did. I did. Damn. You, you worked there. I did work there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a slip. You right. <laughs> First, I called Pharrell and I was like, yo, I got this idea, I want to do this album with Nigo. It's like, great idea. What it is that uh, Nigo is known for, you know, he's an incredible visionary. You know, he's just great at his execution and his curation. I love, that's, that's why we call him the general. He's such a leader. Anything for the general. It speaks to all of the eras that he's been relevant in. And even today, everybody's still copying what Nigo's done. Everybody's still chasing that feeling, that time, that era. They're trying to replicate it in some way, shape, or form. You know, it's, it's Nigo, but then there's Pharrell, there's Pusha, there's Rocky, there's Uzi, there's Cuddy, there's, you're dealing with so many different people from so many different worlds that got their own things going on, but like everyone came together for Nigo. Unfortunately for me, I'm not a creative. You know what I'm saying? So, but I draw inspiration from like people that are extremely creatively talented. So like a conversation with Pharrell or Pusha, for me, it just opens my mind. I think you should just know you're definitely creative. You know, it takes creativity to be able to put a salad together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't got to grow the vegetables, but you got to know what's the good mix. And I think True. that's what this True. album illustrates this really well mm. about you. I like working with P because he knows exactly what I like. He knows. Now, whether he wants to do that for me <laughs> at the time, you know, or whether he has, you know, something that he wants to get off, that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. But he knows exactly what I want. And like, as we talk through it and talk through it and we get closer to what we're trying to create, when we hit that vein, we know it. And it's like the most magical thing. Never gets old. Yeah, never ever gets old. He loves God. He loves God. But this guy is a fucking demon. <laughs> and that, and he loves anything dark. And that's the only thing that when we are sitting down to make, I know it sounds mean, <laughs> but I promise you when we sit down to make music, he don't want to hear no nice chords. Not like, until we got five dark ones. <laughs> when we get, when we finish the five, then, you know, I'm like, hey. Yeah. He wants music that is like dark in nature and provoking to the spirit, to connect to something carnal. They mad at us. Who wouldn't be? We became. I feel like, you know, yay, he just wants a bar fest. And from that, he wants to just take what you do with, with lyrics and then he'll you know, he'll chef it up how he wants to chef it up. Yeah. But it's just two totally different um, exercises. Honestly, I would say like, man, you just know how like blow torches work? That's really what it is. That's just really what's coming. Mm -hmm.